I'm Kyle Anderson. And my next guest, you know her as uh, Abby on Santa Clarita Diet on Netflix. The second season thereof arrives this coming Friday on Netflix. Very, very pleased to be joined. I'm Liv Houston. How are you? Hello. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Uh, I am a giant fan of the show. And, I, uh, and this is one of those scenarios where I actually... People talk about binging shows, but this, I actually binged the first season of Santa Clarita <laughs> Diet very, very fast. Oh, wonderful. Uh, because it ha- cause the pilot of the, the premiere of the show is super gross. And yeah. I was like, I absolutely need more of this. Um, when you were first cast in this and you started seeing these scripts, mm-hmm. what was your initial reaction? Uh, I, I think similar to you watching the first episode <laughs> where I was just like, great, what? okay, where are we going? <laughs> Where, what, where is this train going? I would like to be there. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, this incredibly gross train. Absolutely, yeah. And and I, I I warn people who are slightly squeamish when they're about to start watching the show. I'm like, it's it's never that bad again. We set no, we you're set right. like a benchmark. You're right. And then that's as bad as it's gonna get. <laughs> and, and you're safe. And we'll take care of you. And it's gonna be fine. It is. I would have to assume that it's kind of a strange entry point for people where they turn on a television show and they think, oh, I like Drew Barrymore. Yeah. And then she spends the mo- most of the first ha- half hour of the show vomiting oh, yeah. very violently yes, yes. and uncontrollably. 100%. <laughs> there, there is a room that was white and is green now. Very green. Yeah. And, very and, exceptionally and that's, green. And that's our television show. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Enjoy your stay. That that has been Santa Clarita Diet. Enjoy. <laughs> well, and, and you guys, I have to say, too, that it was one of those scenarios where at the end of the first season, when it ended, I was like, wait a minute. Because like these are there are some very intense cliffhangers I know, walking we into were, season two. We were very mean, unfair. Liv. I know, I know. We were quite cruel, but you know, we had fun with it. Yeah, because like we still don't really know how you injected something into your body, and that you. I did. By the way, that sequence where you pretend to have spasms, <laughs> and Portia Rossi keeps believing you, Aww. is one of the funniest like four minutes of television I've seen in a very long time. Oh, thank just, you so much. Because it just keeps happening. It was a lot of fun to make. <laughs> that, that was one of my favorite scenes to film. Was it? During season uh, one, wait, it's, sure. it's full of joy. Yeah, I, I couldn't have had a better time filming that scene. Wow. So what? So like, was that? How much of like? So what? What does the script actually say in that scenario where it's like she just keeps twitching, or, or do you? Did you yes. have to kind of work it out that day? Well, I I spent some time figuring out how I would differentiate each time I pretended to to have seizures because I knew that they couldn't look the same every time because they would stop believing me, and so right. would the audience. So once it's it starts from my shoulders, once it starts from my wrist, <laughs> once it starts from my neck. And so each time it's like, oh, that looks different. Oh, that's the real one. Right. And so I, I had a great deal of fun, like trying to figure out how how it should escalate and why. And then just being able to like do a full on slapstick direct backwards comedy. Yes. onto a mat. That's it. That's an actor's dream. <laughs> Everyone wants to do like a Buster Keaton. That's a good day at work. Train. Is that is, is that really the dream? Everybody out there just wants to do one big bit of slapstick. Just let us fall over. <laughs> Please. That's all we want. That's why we're doing this. <laughs> it's the, the dream of everybody mm-hmm. is just to be able to fall mm-hmm. and have that be work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I want to just mess around and and make a living. You'll, you'll get you'll get no argument from me, Liv. Yeah. That seems like a very reasonable th- uh, uh, demand for you. You should put, really put that in your contracts from now on. Thank you That's... very much. I'm going to put it on a T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Liv Houston is my guest here on Up All Afternoon on Entertainment Weekly Radio. You can see her in Santa Clarita Diet. First season available now to binge on Netflix. Second season arriving this coming Friday. Uh, So talk to me a little bit about uh, Drew Barrymore plays your mom on the show. She's also undead. Yes. And so tell me a little bit because like there are a couple episodes. I think it's, it's the second or third to last episode of the first season where it's just the two of you, where you mess with that guy oh, yeah. who stole your money from the, the motorcycle thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I love that episode. And I love your relationship and the way that it developed in season one. Uh, so t- talk to me first about what is it like having Drew Barrymore as a TV mom? Well, I it's funny because like when, when the season starts, Abby finds Sheila, Drew's character, distinctly unimpressive. Yeah. She's like, so it's that typical like adolescent relationship of like, oh, mom. Right. Oh my so God, boring. Leave me alone. You're like boring <laughs> and you don't get it. And this sucks. And so I, you know, that sort of was in direct contrast to how I felt about like meeting and working with Drew. So I had to sort of throw myself into, 
like the the TV relationship, which really helped balance out how excited I was. Like it right. like really sort of helped me keep my because cool you were a, little a bit. you were a big fan of hers coming in. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Who isn't? Oh, absolutely. Right. I, yeah. Just fools. <laughs> um, so well, and, and she's really a fascinating one too because like she's been she's been so famous and so good for so long. Yeah. That it's like it's you know she she seems like she's just so much a part of. Like she, like she's like air. Like she's just sort of, she's a person who's there and is great. Absolutely, she's incredible at what she does. It's really remarkable. And so, like, was it? So you were, so you were able to sort of get, like, kind of get over that and, and get into work mode. And is, is it now much more comfortable? Well, or I do mean, you still have to check yourself. It became, it became very comfortable very quickly because, like, um, the the set that we work on is one that's very um communal and very friendly and like. The four of us in particular, like me, Tim, Drew and Skylar, have so much fun together making this show that like we we like threw ourselves into it really, really quick. And it became like a fun, friendly work environment um, very quickly, which was great. It's like a, a total gift to come to work every day and have that be what we get to make together. Isn't that nice to have yeah. to have that kind of joy? Yeah, one hundred percent. And so how you know, when do, does the second season pick up right where the first season left off? Uh, it picks up like. 12 hours okay. after, after left, left, left off the right. next morning yeah so we're, we're carrying over and so like how you know but obviously in, in real time mm -hmm. like a year and a half had passed between yeah. the time that you made these things and so like how do you as an actress how do you kind of square that because you know that you your character has to be essentially in the same place as, as you left her but you as a human being are in a, di in a different place entirely yeah it's fun because like obviously you you as a person grow and change and learn a lot in in a year happening to you hopefully um well i mean you would hope so <laughs> and especially like i'm like i'm 22 so like every every year passing is teaching me a great deal about like myself as a person but also myself as an actor so it was yeah. nice to be able to come back to season two knowing more um about performing and about myself being like oh i can there's new stuff i can bring to this now like i can I can play with more things. I know what I'm doing a bit more. I'm more settled into this. Like we can start really like having fun with it. Yeah. Um, which was great. And uh, it felt a little bit like coming back to a, to an old friend who's been away for a while. Where it's like you 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 go away for a few months and then you come back. It's like oh hello hi how have you <laughs> Abby how this have you been? This is what we do together. Hey, what's going on? Oh, the same thing. Let's deal with that. <laughs> Let's get back into it. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Do, is there is there any of live in Abby? I, I mean, you have the same face, obviously. Yeah, we're both redheads. <laughs> um, she's American. I'm not. Right. Uh, she's 16, and I'm not. But I, I was, a, I was quite a sarcastic, uh, independent 16 year old. Yeah. Not necessarily in the same way as her. I think, I think she definitely has like she has herself more together than I did at 16. I was mm -hmm. a bit of a mess. Um, but I imagine at 16 you weren't also accessory to murder. No, well, well. I mean, not not that we know of. We don't no. want to admit things here. No, not yeah. that we, no, no, it's not to put this on that one. It's no, not going to confess things. No, um, but she, yeah, she's she's very sure of herself in a way that I wasn't yet. Mm -hmm. Um, which is which is really kind of fun to play around with. Like, and and she's, but yeah, she's she's very sarcastic, like very witty, very like independent, and um focused on you know on the best thing to do for any situation and and that was that i was a little bit like that as a teenager and i certainly wanted to be like that as a teenager right it was a more of a sort of like a, a kind of a aspirational thing that you grew into yeah 100 percent. yeah liv houston is here on up all afternoon on entertainment weekly radio you can see her in santa clarita diet second season available this coming friday march 23rd on netflix uh 10 more episodes oh yeah very exciting, very exciting. So yeah, as uh, as mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. you are uh, you're not from this country. No, and and you would never know that on this show. Thank you. It was uh, I I I am always and you would think that I would be over this at this point, but I'm always super impressed whenever I see someone on a television show and then I see them in an interview and find out oh they have a natural accent that is not the accent that I have. I'm a stealth Australian. You're very stealth, <laughs> which is wild. And did I did I read somewhere that you helped that uh, part of the development of your American American accent came from watching The Simpsons? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really? Well, I mean, I, I started watching The Simpsons with, like, my brothers and my dad when I, when I was, like, I don't know, two, three? Like, right. like really young. So that, um, uh, so, like, the, the Simpsons and Futurama and, like, um, even American music and but particularly American comedies. Um, I just, I learned an American accent not on purpose, but just by quoting things. Right. By like having in jokes with my family and friends from American stuff we'd seen, and I was, and I've always been naturally fascinated with voices and accents and like how, how people talk and where those sounds come from in your mouth. Like that, that stuff is 
really interesting to me. But part of how that interest expressed itself when I was a kid was just like quoting jokes I thought were funny, a lot of which happened to be said by Americans. So right. it's it's just nice that it's come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very useful to you professionally. Yes, yes, yeah. which is convenient. Do you do you ever at this point have to kind of uh, uh, like train yourself into something, or or is it or does it does it come is it sort of like ingrained at this point? I'll um. The, the American accent is pretty ingrained at this point. When I would start having to like really like whack myself with a stick a little bit is if I tried to do anything like regional or um, oh, okay. if I started playing around with things that are more specific to place because like that's much more like intricate. Right. And um, I'm less familiar with that than I am with like the broad strokes American right. accent that you see like here in pop culture a lot. But there is, you, you do really have that kind of, because there's a, there's a certain flatness to that kind of central Southern California yeah. accent that is like, I, that I, I find to be a very specific regional thing. And I, I think you, you pull it off very nicely. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, I, I always find it amazing to, I almost, I almost kind of feel bad for people who live in English speaking foreign countries. Cause I feel like that you're sort of, I mean, we, you have a lot of American culture forced on you just because it's too, <laughs> it's too big not to. Yeah. But I, I'm curious, are there, are there Australian television shows that you feel like we, sh- we here in America should start watching? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, I th- I think you're never you're never going to be worse off exploring um media from another place. Like, yeah, that's not gonna it's not gonna be bad for you. Yeah. Um, there are there are like, especially um stylistic differences that you wouldn't find in other places. So, for instance, like we know we have an awareness of like English and American comedy being quite different. I think right. it's pretty easy to articulate why. Um, but and then Australian comedy is, is is its own thing as well, which is like something that I'm very deeply attached to, obviously, um, and that I would love to see people get more into in places like here. Uh, but like any any media from any country, if you start exploring it, especially if it's unfamiliar to you, I think like you'll be surprised in ways that are really pleasant. So, what do you define as Australian comedy? Um, it's quite we have a history of like um of quite biting satire okay and quite quite wordy so like less less slapstick and and more wordy and like more humor around coming from um the voice of like an of like an everyman like like australia has a slightly different relationship with class i think oh okay um being you know <laughs> originally like a convict colony <laughs> like that's, sure sure i don't know if that's the reason why but um australia has like a sort of a an awareness of itself culturally as like an underdog right and that and that you see that in um comedy it's and it's a lot of like watching characters who um aren't even necessarily likable watching people try to do things and fail at it in ways that are just devastatingly hilarious <laughs> <laughs> the comedy of failure yes yeah. yes all right I'm in. Count Great. me in. All right. Let's, we'll get to start importing some of that as much as possible. Great. Yeah, very exciting. Liv Houston is here. The show is Santa Clarita Diet. Season 2 shows up on Netflix. It's coming Friday, March 23rd. You can catch up with Season 1. It's all there. And uh, as you mentioned before, this, uh, this central cast is incredible. And uh, a bunch of people joined for Season 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you get to have any fun with uh, uh, the former guests of this show, Joel McHale and Natalie Morales? Like It's, a, it's this amazing... Uh, sort of murderer's row of uh, guest stars this uh, this yeah, season. Yeah, we're we're really lucky to work with um the the cast of like uh, guest and recurring characters that that we do. Like, yeah. um, e- everyone's been delightful and funny. And I uh, with that with that recurring um guest characters in particular, like people like John McHale and Natalie Morales, it's always like, oh my god, hi, you're back, <laughs> you're in this Hooray. one. Yes, we're so happy to see you. What's been going on? Um, and we're we're very blessed to be in a situation where we get to work with such like funny creative people so regularly. Yeah. And so, are there things that we're going to see you doing in season two that have never been demanded of you before as an actress? Oh boy. Um, it, the stakes definitely ratchet up this season for yeah. for everybody. So ev- everybody has new challenges to be working with. Everyone has new tools and new circumstances. And I think that season two really like pushes everything up like to 2.0 in, in terms of like severity and, and stakes and things to play around with. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of escalation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's fun though. 
<laughs> and it does seem I love that I like I love the way that all the characters on this show and uh, you know have these kind of weird fraying points and it, and it's everybody kind of by degrees and no one falls apart at the same time which I think is always like kind of neat like like it seems like anytime anytime Tim's character is at his wit's end everybody else is like there to kind of pull him back in which I think is like fundamentally makes this a, a show about about family in the darkest grossest way possible yeah it's like spinning plates yeah exactly it's that's exactly what it is yeah I, I tell people like this this is a show about a family that loves each other very much and is like working to keep each other safe and like take care of each other and also there are zombies in it <laughs> Well, that's the thing, like, for all of the insane things that happen on Santa Clarita Diet, I do find it weirdly relatable. Yeah. And I don't know what that says about me or my family or whatever, but it does, like, because all those fundamental elements are there. Mm. And then, you know, it just happens to have all this kind of insane stuff also Well, I'm so glad to hear that. And, like, uh, we, all of us really, like, treasure the dynamic of, like, this is a family who is a a really tight-knit functional team. Yeah. Dealing with circumstances that are ridiculous. (laughs) And so the tension of like a grounded, healthy, familiar relationship, like the tensions that exist within any normal familiar relationship. And then also we have to murder and eat people and keep that a secret. And that's fine, I guess. Right. Like playing between the real and the surreal is so much fun. And it's so great that it it took those extreme extenuating circumstances to really bring you guys close together. Like that's the the catalyst. Yeah. And so, you know, not getting a, uh, you know, undead disease is not the end of the world necessarily crisis is opportunity there's an amazing like i really do feel like the the defining moment in the first season with you know between abby and sheila Mm. is when she i think i think it's in the finale when drew barrymore comes to you and says i need you to chain mommy in the basement yeah and there's a real like i don't like that scene is there's a there's a weird like sensitivity in that scene like there's there's a closeness and a warmth which is strange because that's one woman asking another to chain her up oh yeah and and that's like that's so our show yeah, exactly like that's the whole thing in a nutshell 100 percent. that's fantastic well you can watch the second season of slana Clar- slana nah, that's not a word <laughs> santa clarita diet is coming this uh, friday march 23rd on netflix you can catch up with season one right now this second Liv Houston, thank you so much for coming in and hanging out. Thank you so much for this having me. It's been an utter delight, and we'll uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have you back again as, as soon as I watch a lot of Australian TV comedy, and then we can break it down. Please, I'd love that. <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, thanks again to Liv Houston. We're going to take a break right now. We'll be back with more pop culture fun right here on Up All Afternoon.